So I must be going crazy because I actually volunteered and asked Glenn if I could speak this morning. So that's a sign of old age, I'm not sure what it would be. But this is the beginning of the fall feasts of Jesus or of God. And so I would like to just go over a few of those and if I can point out the significance of those in the Christian life. They're all directed to his, to his chosen people, but as being grafted in and adopted and all of that stuff, why we should, if not totally partake of what they, what God has instructed his people to do, we should be at least aware of that. So I would like to show, share with you some of the things of how Jesus completed the feast. This starts with the Passover, of course, as Jesus, as we know, Jesus is the Passover lamb, that he died for our sins, just as in Passover, they slaughtered a lamb, painted blood around the doorpost, and all of the firstborn were spared uh, on that night of Passover. The next day begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which God gave to the people. And that is like we took, partook in the, the bread here uh, today at communion. Unleavened bread is that bread which has no yeast in it. And yeast, is, as you know, in the Bible represents sin. And so how did Jesus fulfill that? He was without sin. So he represents the, the unleavened bread. The next verse is first fruits. And that is a uh, spring harvest. That is when the people, the farmers, start harvesting barley. And so they harvest that in, and God gives them an instructions to bring it to the Temple Mount as a, their first fruits, as a thanks offering for his blessings of that feast. And so what is, how does that work for us? Well, Jesus is the first fruits. It says in 1 Corinthians that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So he's the first fruits, and we are the first fruits following that from that experience. So Jesus completed that feast. Then 50 days later, we have Pentecost or Shavuot, and that is a summer harvest for the Jewish people. That's when they harvest their wheat. And again, they are instructed to bring their first fruits into the temple to, to give to God for thanks offering for his bountiful harvest. So what does that give for us? We have, it is also uh, a giving of the law that the Moses gave, or that God gave to Moses. So what does that work for us? Christ has given us the Holy Spirit. And that's his blessing and his promise that he gave to, to, to us as a people. It is at the giving of the law, why there were 3,000 souls lost or would die because of their uh, sin, that they worshiped other gods. And at the, the Shavuot, 3,000 were saved it's through the giving of the Holy Spirit. We then go skip a few months, and now we're in October in the fall feast. There's three fall feasts that we need to look at. The first one is the Feast of, of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah. And the Rosh Hashanah in Hebrew means head of the year. So this is, this is a big time in Israel. It's their New Year's. It is their civil New Year's because at Passover, God says, that is the beginning of the year for the religious people of Israel. So Israel has two New Year's, Passover and uh, Feast of Trumpets. It is very uh, low profile feast that he says that he gives them 
He tells them to do no work and blow the trumpets from the corners of the temple. It's all the Bible gives us instructions on what they are to do. So it's, uh, I think, is a, with comparison to the others, it's a very low-profile feast. But to us, I believe it's very significant. The they also begins the ten days of off. And this is the most holy season for the Jewish nation that you could possibly have. And it starts with the, the Feast of Trumpets and goes through the Feast of Tabernacles. Yet, uh, and the, in the middle of that is the Day of Atonement. And that is the most significant day God has given his people. On that day is a very solemn day. It's a very long day. It's a lot of work for all of the holy nation. Uh, to, just to give you a quick overview of that day. It starts at sunrise. Uh, they slaughter a goat and they free a goat and it is for forgiveness of the it's not forgiveness, it's for covering of the sins of, of the Jewish nation. And the, the people go to, they, they go to synagogue four or five times throughout the whole day. They say prayers all day long. And it's just a very difficult day. The significance of it is, is on that day, the Jews believe that your name is written in the book of life. And on that day, God reviews your life and has an eraser in his hand. And if you did not live up to the righteous life throughout the year, you could be erased out of the book of life. And so for one year period, and then you start over. So they are very uh, cognizant of that. When I say they, being the religious Jews of, of, of Israel, the ones that are secular, <coughs> they don't pay much attention to such things. But, but the, with the faithful and the religious Jews, this is, this is the instructions God has given them, and they take it very serious. So then we have Tabernacles or Sukkot. And that is for the purpose of celebrating the end of the 40 years that the Israelites were in the desert. And the 40 years of God providing food for them, for providing clothes for them, for, for just taking care of them for all their needs. Uh, must have been hard on some people who are fashion conscious because they, the Bible says that their clothes never wore out. So they didn't get new fashions every year, and life just went on dull and boring in the desert. But they did survive, and God honored that. So how, do, how did Jesus fulfill that for us? Well, the purpose of that is to celebrate that God living with his people and providing for them. For us, it's us having the Holy Spirit within us, and we are living and residing with Christ and God every day. And that's a very comforting thought, when you, that because of Jesus' death, we are permanently written in the Book of Life. We don't have to worry about the big eraser in the sky. <laughs> so what comes next? Well, we are known as the Bride of Christ. And that's a very significant thing. Because one day, Jesus is going to come back for his brother. And I'd like to cover a few scriptures that cover that. Uh, first, Thess first Thessalonians. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In Revelation it says, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For a wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride had made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. 
So that's the great hope that we have, is that he's going to come and gather us up to be with him. So how will that take place? In 1 Corinthians it, says, it declares, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In the flash of, and in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the, imperish, for the perishable cannot clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. So he's going to be, we're going to be changed and it's going to be quickly, the twinkling of an eye. Uh, I'm not sure what a twinkle is. And what a blink is. And that is pretty quick. So a twinkling is faster than a blink. <laughs> then in 1 Thessalonians it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will raise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Very comforting words. And in that passage it says, therefore encourage each other with these words. So what a deal. That's how it's going to work. That was half of what it's good. Jesus, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to go away. And he will if he said he was going away, he will return. And these are the instructions of how that's going to take place. So we look forward to that day when that does take place, that he does come and gather his church back. Now, for those of us who are pre-trib folks, right on. For those who are mid-trib, they're going to be surprised. And post-trippers are really going to be surprised. <laughs> so, not sure about that. So, in Matthew it says, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know what hour or what day the Lord will come. And it's very clear that he said that he will. You know, no man knows the hour or the day. Because as in Jewish tradition, when the bride and the bridegroom, they agree to be married, and he comes and offers, the bridegroom offers the bride a, a cup of wine. If she takes that cup, she says, yes, I'll be your, your, your bride. If she does not, he goes on, and she waits for a better offer, I guess. <laughs> but, so, and it's a, that's a neat thing about communion. That Jesus offers us that cup, and when we take that cup, we're saying, yes, we will be your brother. Uh, very significant, I think. So, in the end, it says that no man knows the hour or the day. However, you can speculate. Uh, the Bible says <coughs> we are not to be, uh, didn't write the scripture down, we are not to be in the dark basically. That we know, we have the scriptures, we know that he's coming, so we are to be prepared at all times for that to take place. As the, the world, they don't even know it's coming, so they're totally in the dark. So we have the scriptures, we, can, we do have an idea of when this happens. We have prophecy writers all the time keeping track daily of what goes on in the world news and comparing that to the scriptures of what all is going on. And I can assure you, we're closer to the rapture now than we were yesterday. So you should always keep that in mind. So the reason for all of this that I am saying is because the rapture has not taken place yet today. It could be later today 
or early tomorrow, because this is the first, this is the Feast of Trumpets uh, right now. It started about an hour and a half ago in Jerusalem when it got dark. That's the first day. And it'll go till sunset in Jerusalem tomorrow. So they say you can't know the day nor the hour. So I will agree with that. I don't know if it's going to be later today or early tomorrow. <laughs> today, I don't know whether it's going to be tomorrow or today. So I can, I can be in scripture and be fine with that. So I'm here to tell you, be ready and look up. <laughs> you're on. Thought you were doing the whole thing. Well, I thought about it and decided I'd short it. Right. <laughs> you said I had as much time as I wanted. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, well, believe it or not, I do have a message prepared. Believe it or not, I'm not going to do the message. <laughs> Pick yourselves up off the floor. <laughs> um, I do, I do want to read a passage of scripture, and this will be the basis for the message next week, unless God changes my plans again. <laughs> and I'm okay with that, because I'd rather follow his leading. So uh, if you have your Bibles, open to Luke chapter 19. So this week you have homework. Oh, oh no, homework. <clears throat> I love giving homework. I figure if I've got to do it, you should do it as well. Um, we're going to pick up in verse 11, but before we start in verse 11, um, I want to kind of set the stage here. Um, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. Okay? And he's come down to Jericho, and then he's going to walk the Jericho Road. Um, if any of you have ever watched uh, Ray Vanderlaan, you know that the road, road is a very generous term for what they walk. It's more like a thread on the side of a cliff that meanders around. And um, he's, he's going to walk from Jericho up to Jerusalem. And as he comes into Jericho, he sees a fidget. Does anybody know what a fidget is? Nobody watched Little Rascals? Seriously, nobody watched Little Rascals? A fidget, a short person. A little person, a fidget. <laughs> nobody else watched that? What did you do with your Saturdays? Okay. I believe it was Stein that called him a fidget because he was short. He comes in and he sees a short man named Zacchaeus. Okay, now everybody knows the story of Zacchaeus, right? He was a t tax collector. Not only was he a tax collector, he was the chief tax collector. So not only was he a bad guy, he was the biggest bad guy. Okay, because to the Jew, a tax collector had sold them out. Because the tax collector's responsibility was to gather the taxes for Rome. And the tax collector could charge whatsoever he would, as long as he rendered unto Caesar what was Caesar's, the rest he kept. So tax collectors often made themselves wealthy off of the work of their countrymen. Now to be the chief tax collector meant you were the one that was in charge of all the other tax collectors. So not only did you sell out your people, but you did it to such a degree that the Romans put you in charge of all the other people that sold out their people. Okay, so he's like number one on the most despised list in Jericho. And he's heard about Jesus. He wants to, to know what's going on with this man. He's heard about the miracles. He's heard about his teachings. And, and he goes down to see what's going on. Well, the problem is he's a little late getting there. And, and I could just see how this is set up 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, Brandon and Caleb to just kind of help us here. Brandon and Caleb, come up here. Okay, and just stand and, and face that way. Okay, because Jesus is coming through this way. So you guys are just standing here now. You're gonna help us too. You are our Zacchaeus. <laughs> okay. Now, now, so here's the picture. We're the Jews. We're waiting to see Jesus come in, and I. Okay. Chief tax collector. Who wants to see Jesus? What do you think about that? I don't think we let him. So he's trying to see, and and he's trying to get around, and and what's he end up doing? Zacchaeus, what do you end up doing? I'll climb, up on the tree. climb up on a tree. Climb up here. We'll pretend this is your tree. <laughs> climb up. Okay. And he looks out over the top. You're still too short. So you need to squat. Okay. And he sees Jesus coming down the road. Now what happens? Jesus stops and he says, Zacchaeus, you're destroying my tree. He says, Zacchaeus. You guys can sit down. Thank you. Thank you for being faithful Jews. He says, uh, Zacchaeus, come down because surely I'm going to eat dinner at your house today. Now, we all have that one person, or sometimes several people, that happen to show up just at dinner time. We, we, it happens at our house all the time. I love it. I, I have absolutely no problem with it. Um, and, and so we just put out another plate and divide the food up one extra portion. But Jesus comes to Zacchaeus and says, hey, I'm on your way. He's that guest. I'm on your way, my way to your house. You're going to feed me. And so Zacchaeus, who has a change of heart, um, does anybody remember the parable Jesus told about the Pharisee and the tax collector? And they came into the temple and the Pharisee, stood in his self-righteousness and said, I thank God that I am not a sinner such as the tax collector. And, and then the tax collector, who didn't even raise his head up, but bowed his head and said, God, forgive me for I am a sinner. That was Zacchaeus. Okay? I, I believe that Jesus had Zacchaeus in mind. Zacchaeus and Matthew in mind when he's talk, telling this parable. Because these men, when they came to the confrontation, that moment, face to face with God, they understood what that moment meant. And they were willing to lay it all down. Okay? Now, think about this. In, in the, the group of, of 12 disciples, Jesus had Simon the Zealot. Okay? The, the word for zealot, zealotes or sicarius. Uh, it's not just somebody that is zealous for their country like, you know, they're really hyped up about being an American or, in his case, a Jew. They were violent men who were trying to expel the Romans through bloodshed. They were terrorists, okay? And they would try to incite fear into the Roman people by, by doing these atrocities, okay? And, and then you have Matthew, the tax collector, who as far as the zealots are concerned is the biggest sellout. He's even worse than the Romans that came in because he sold out his own people. And yet Jesus took them and through the working of God was able to make them not only disciples but apostles. Okay? So Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house and Zacchaeus has that confrontation with God. And... I want, to, I want to read just a little bit right at the very end of this so you can see kind of where we're going. He says, uh, this is Zacchaeus. He says, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Okay? Now, I can't imagine how much money this guy had that he could get rid of half of all of his stuff and then pay back four times what he has stolen from people. But he must have had quite a bit. This, this kind of stands in contrast to the rich young ruler, doesn't it? Who, who went away sad because he had great wealth and Jesus told him, to, well, this guy doesn't even wait for Jesus to say, give it up. He offers it. And then look how Jesus responds. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house since he also is the son of Abraham. Okay? For the Son of Man came to seek 
and to save the lost. All right. So this is the setting. All right. So Jesus has just talked to to Zacchaeus. We've seen salvation come to this house. This man, when he says, "For this man too is a son of Abraham," this is a restoration unlike anything that we really know, because he has restored not only his national identity but his cultural, his religious identity. Okay, he has named him before all men to be a seed, an heir of Abraham. Okay, and this is huge for the Jews. All right, Abraham is their father, so he's he is reestablishing that that Zacchaeus is not only does he belong to God, but he is, he is restored in his position among the Jews. All right? Well, then, then he comes down. So this is what's happened. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. And then verse 11. I'm just going to read from 11 to the end, and then I'll give you your homework. Okay? As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable. Okay, now first, who's they? Well, it's the disciples and the people that are gathered at Zacchaeus' house. Okay? Because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So this is why he's telling the parable. Alright? He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent the delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered his servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came to him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, this is the master speaking to the servant, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put the money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you that everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one that has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. All right. Homework. Okay, I heard the heavy sighs. <clears throat> what is going on here? That's your homework. I want you to read through this passage, read a little bit before, read a little bit after, because you always understand. We don't take Scripture out of the context in which it's used. Understand what's going on. I want you to figure out what in the world is happening here. Okay? Yes, it's Bible study. <laughs> I used another bad word in church. <laughs> yeah, see, in, in this church, I have a not just reasonable expectation but a confident expectation that you will study the Word. Okay? Because we are called to know the Word. This is the foundation upon which all of our faith comes to be. Alright? So, your homework is, I want you to study this passage. Now, there's a caveat here. I don't want you reading somebody else's opinion about what this says. I want you to, to formulate your own opinion. 
understand what's going on. And then, if you feel so inclined, then you can look at the commentaries and see what other people think. Okay? But I don't want you to do that right off the bat. I want you to develop your own, your own theology. I want you to get an understanding of what's going on in this passage. Now, I'm going to add that next week when we talk about it, the perspective that I am coming from, what is the series we're talking about? Money. Money. So I'm coming at it from the perspective of money. Okay? But that's not the only position that is being played out here. Okay? So don't freak out if what I speak on next week is a little bit different than what you come up with. Okay? I believe an infinite God is very capable of teaching one lesson that moves on multiple levels. Okay? Because he's got to deal with some people that are very smart, like some of you, and he's got to deal with some people that are not as smart, like me. So we, we just kind of, he deals with us where we're at. Okay? So there's your homework for this week. I've read you the passage. Okay? I want you to look at it. I want you to come to a reasonable understanding of what's going on here. No, I'm not going to make you get up and give an oral report next week. I'll do the oral report. Okay? Alright. That wasn't so painful, was it? <laughs> How can we pray for you this week? <coughs> Pat. Uh, Christian needs prayer. She was checked out again. They found more melanoma on her fingers and her toes. Um, discoloration on the scar from what they dug out of her shoulder. So, prayer there. And then, Kimberly's having a lot of time in her marriage. October 22nd for those who feel that to help us. Is that the prayer or the praise? It's both. We need a lot of help. Okay. Thank God for those that will help. Um, also, we have to have our, our home ready for carpeting and everything before we can move in. That's why the new date is the 22nd because we are going to be completing it before the 20th. Okay. So, um, we have painting and things to do. It's, it's, it's been fun. And That's not how Gordy described it at brother's meetings. <laughs> <laughs> fun wasn't the word he used. <laughs> Don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's coming to fruition. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I have a couple things. Um, my older sister Melissa, her fiance is having some health issues, and so just for uh, guidance on what to do, and just that everything ends up being okay. What's his name again? Chad. Chad. Okay. Yeah. And then um, just uh, for guidance in our life as we are trying to buy a car and find a place to live and. I don't know what is needed right in front of us and clear signs that this is the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah, I saw another hand over here somewhere. Yeah, Sina. Um, I need to pray for some co-workers at work for their health. Um, it's cancer and part of it and then the unknown of another. So you just want a co-worker? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, Mary Lou, I saw your hand. Yes, I talked to Nicole this morning and asked about Sean. And his blood is just like water. His uh, INR is 7.4, which it should be between 2 and 3. And uh, they have taken him clear off of his antibiotics now. They don't know whether he's got an infection or what, what it is when they take him off of the antibiotics. His blood uh, thickens up a little bit. So they, they don't know what's going on with him, but he's like, his is all swollen and hot and uh, he's just in a, mi a very miserable state right now. And Nicole, she's got bronchitis and all kinds of stuff going on. Okay, no one else. Thank you. For Shane's parents, they're going through a free rush one right now. Just get them back for uh, us, for wisdom, and what our responsibilities are for the son, mom, and daughter. And grandkids, but probably can be a blessing to both of them and like, get involved and for their own safety and all that. Okay. Anyone else? Ken. I have a praise. Okay. Uh, I have for some time been told I was almost a diabetic and blah blah blah, you know, the usual routine thing, but I found out and have a doctor says you're not even Awesome. So, and that was a good thing, the blood test showed I have good uh, functioning the liver kidneys, different things. Okay. Which kind of release a little bit off your mind. Yep. Yeah. But I want to, I'm in the thought of my father-in-law, old pop, uh, Blaine. Where he's been living, they moved from North Carolina, they sold their house, they both quit their jobs, and they moved to South Carolina. <clears throat> they signed the house in North Carolina Thursday, they signed in the new house in South Carolina Friday, and he left yesterday. Last night. Last night. So, uh, you know, there's a certain amount of uncertainty. He's out of his comfort zone right now. And, uh, Top it off, kind of went through a tough thing through security. For some reason, they detected some kind of a chemical on his hands, and he was really getting uptight to think that they would think that he was a terrorist at 87 years of age. But the point is, I think he's a little stressed, and so he would have got into Charlotte, North Carolina last night about quarter to five, but then they had to drive all the way to South Carolina where they're going to be living and they, I don't know if they've got a house to live in or if they're homeless. I guess they got the house. So it's just a matter of getting situated. But it's taken him out of his realm of the VA, the doctors, the familiarity being partially blind and can't hear. Mobility is an issue, so he's kind of uncomfortable in many ways. If I went on vacation and my house was sold from underneath me and moved, I'd be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, triple that. Yeah. For him. Okay. It was good, and he wanted to thank everybody. Uh, he, he really appreciated coming here. And I don't know what happened, but he's got this idea that everybody's pretty nice around here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, I have a phrase and for a question. Um, the phrase is a, a co-worker that I work with. His young daughter ended up um, being pregnant and they were talking about abortion and uh, just praying, 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 praying to talk to her about it and stop. And so they chose to keep the baby. So awesome. that's an yeah. awesome phrase. Yeah. And then the current question is for our <coughs> business that we're trying to get going that we can get through this biggest hurdle of all the separate thing that would just go away so that it's easy.
praise last um, Sunday afternoon our newly combined youth group met and um, we, did, we did dinner and worship and Benj and Buck and Josh did the worship and that was great and Benj gave his testimony and uh, one of the young girls gave her heart to the Lord Amen. and that was awesome. So keep praying for that ministry and it was a double blessing because she's our neighbor and one of my piano students so that was very cool to see but keep, keep praying for that ministry because it's God's using it in moving. So. Yes, very much so. Okay. Yeah, Shelly. Um, Dr. Peschel, the doctor that's been helping me with my eyes, going in for surgery on October 4th, Tuesday, and he has a 50% chance of dying. He's going in for surgery. Oh. Yeah. Okay, definitely. What else? Lori. Kate and I are traveling this week. So prayer because you're traveling with Kate? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Robin. Yeah, um, so first off, I'd like to thank the people at home who helped us uh, be out of our house. I mean, uh, especially thanks to Kimberly, because she kept uh, my wife from hurting herself. So <laughs> yeah. that was a true blessing. Um, and and Carolyn's still having yeah. some issues right now. Mm -hmm. I think she's uh, ruptured a couple cysts and she's been out of the hospital. So she's been in all pain. And then one last thing is our oldest granddaughter, Alyssa. It's having some uh, real issues right now. It's going to be very Um, I just have a praise for Matthew and everyone that helps him with the wood ministry. The amount of work that was put into that is incredible. And uh, it's going to be such a benefit to people that need it. So I was Would you go ahead and put the one of the pictures of the, the wide angle that I took yesterday? I want you guys to see this so you can understand a little bit about what was done if you weren't there. And I know a lot of you were there. Um, that was part of the wood that was cut yesterday. And then if you go to the one that's looking down the back side. We had four splitters running at once yesterday with at least four people on each splitter. Now that, that whole pile you see on the left and kind of curling around the back, that was all split yesterday. Every bit of it. So Matthew, how many cords did you say were split yesterday? Well, I think we figured in the high 20s. So that was awesome. Well, well done, job well done, thank you. Thank you for everyone that showed up. Any other prayer requests? Jeannie. Uh, for the Jews. Yes. Uh, this is the starting of the high holy season for the fall, and so always, always, they are attacked. So they're closing off border between Gaza and uh, Israel proper. Gaza is Israel, but they don't know it. Yes. But, uh, yeah. okay. Sonia. I'd like to pray for my results. Yes, Sonia had her sleep study last night, so prayer for the results of the sleep study. All right, Pat. I'd like prayer for all of us in the congregation with our doctor appointments, wisdom, on what to do, <laughs> surgery coming up. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for so many answered prayers. I thank you, Father, for this life that was spared, uh, this woman that decided not to abort her child. I thank you, Father, for intervening in that situation. And I ask, God, that you would bless her. 
through the pregnancy, through the delivery, Father, that this child would just be an enormous blessing to that family. I pray, Father, that you would continue to reveal yourself to them. Father, we uh, lift Krisha to you tonight, or today, as, as uh, she's gotten a report of more melanoma. Uh, Father, you are almighty, and this is not beyond you. So, Father, I'm asking that you would glorify yourself and bring honor to your name by healing her, bringing, you, bringing her through this, that there would be no uh, problems, no concerns. Father, we lift up Kimberly and the, and the situation going on, the, the stress and the strain in her marriage and her family. And Father, I ask that she would remember those things that she learned in her youth, that she would turn to you and call out and you would save. Father, we lift up uh, Gordy and Deb and, and all the preparations that they're having to make for this house before the move in. And I just ask that you would give them a clear leading Father, that they would be able to organize and, and accomplish without stress all those things that need to be done. And Father, that you would uh, just encourage them in this and, and that when they move into their house, it would be with a deep sense of thanksgiving and satisfaction. And Father, we lift up uh, Brandon and Grace. And Father, that you would lead them uh, with the situation with the car, with the situation with the housing. Father, you know all things, so we're just trusting you that you would provide them with the answers that they're looking for. Father, we lift up uh, Sina's co-worker with this uh, cancer and this unknown issue. I, I ask God that you would uh, make clear uh, what's going on, that you would bring peace, that Father, you would use Sina to speak life into the situation, encouragement and hope. And I pray, Father, that you would receive glory in this. We lift up Sean um, and the, the, all the different things that are going on, Father. I, I can't even begin to imagine. I just ask God that uh, he would call out to you and he would see the Almighty God move his hand and that he would sing your praises. Father, we also lift up Nicole with this bronchitis and these other health issues and just ask for a touch for her as well. Father, I am asking for a season of peace for Ted and Mary Lou and their family. Father, we lift up uh, the McNamara's and, and the, the situation going on. I ask, Lord God, that you would glorify yourself uh, in this situation, that you would bring peace, that, Father, in, in whatever way would need be done, Father, that you would uh, move in such a way that everyone that sees what's going on would declare that the Almighty God has done this. And Father, we lift up Benj and Shay and, and just ask that you would give them wisdom as you lead them in this to know what they should do, how they should do, Father, how they should pray. And that, Father, they would move so move forward with confidence. And I pray, Father, also for Lane and, and all of the situation with the moving of the house and the new place. And uh, Father, I just ask that your peace would be on him. That, Father, he would find where normally he would be uh, tense or uptight, Father, but he would just find that your peace is overwhelming him. And Father, that he would be a bastion of peace for those around him. We pray also, Father, for uh, this this uh, business that Terry and Alan are, are setting up. We ask, Father, that you would give them favor in the eyes of those that need to make the determinations as what needs to be done, that things would move quickly and they would be able to do that which they believe you have called them to do. And, and Father, that it would be a blessing to them and to others. We pray also, Father, for uh, Dr. Uh, Shelley's doctor, Peshko, and, and this surgery. And, and God, uh, it doesn't matter what the odds are, because with you, it's always success. So Father, we are putting him into your hands. And we ask not just for survival, but we ask for success in this surgery procedure. And I pray, Father, that uh, Shelley would be coming back with a, a praise report with uh, the things that have come out. And I pray also for Shelley and the situation with her eyes. So, Father, that you would just continue to get the blood out, that they would be able to look and see what needs to be done. Father, we're asking that there would not be a necessity for surgery. And I ask, Father, that she would find not only her peace in you, but, Father, that she would find her joy as well. Father, we lift up uh, Kate and Lori as they travel uh, out to Oregon. We pray for safe travels there. We pray for a good visit as, as David gets to meet his great-grandparents and, and Father, that they would have a blessed time and a safe trip returning home. 
We pray also for Carolyn and the, the numerous health issues that she's dealt with over the past few months. Father, with her neck and her back and, and with these cysts, we ask, Father, for a healing touch from you that she would be able to not just function, Father, but she would be able to do so comfortably. We pray, Father, also for uh, their daughter, Alyssa, and, and just ask God that you would be very clear in your leading of her, Father, that she would see and understand what you would have of her, and that she would come through this, Father, as a testimony of your goodness. Now, Father, we lift up the Jews as they enter into the holy season of the fall, Father, and the, and the, the high days, and Father, how the enemy seeks with every means possible to tear this down and to inflict injury and damage. Father, we are asking for your protection. We are asking that your people would remember their covenant vows with you, that they are your people and you are their God. And Father, that they would see that the Messiah has come and that, that Father, all that they, they are bound to, they can be delivered from. We ask, Father, for salvation for the Jews. We pray, Father, also for Sonia and the outcome of this sleep study. We ask, Father, that uh, it would be a good uh, report. There would be no concerns. Everything would be taken care of. We pray also for all of those dealing with doctor's appointments, procedures, <coughs> surgeries, all of these things coming up. Father, we know that you are the divine physician. We know that you hold us firmly in your hand and nothing can shake us loose. So we lift each of these people up to you, Father, and we ask that in whatever situation they find themselves, they would sing your praises. We bless you today and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. A um, couple of things in the announcements that I want to make a point to draw your attention to. Today, life change, okay? Uh, immediately after service, we will go to the back building and, and share potluck. Um, at 2.30, actually I'm going to ask it at uh, 2.15, let me make sure I got my time right, yes, at 2.15 we meet out in front of Cornerstone in Hamilton, okay, Cornerstone is across the street from Wimp's Body Work, uh, kind of catty corner from Pizza Hut, uh, we will gather there, our block is from Cornerstone all the way down to Walgreens, and we also have some people that go over uh, to the other side of the road by Wimps and kind of stand over there and help fill in that block as well. Please, make a point to be there, to stand up, to be a voice for those whose voices are not being heard, for the unborn children. I am asking you, God says that his heart is for the children, that he knows them before they are even formed in the womb. Okay, so it doesn't matter what your science is, it doesn't matter what your biology is, God has declared them to be alive. Okay, God has. So, Terry. Um, in addition to the, the prank that I had with the, the, they decided to keep the baby, they yes. had a sonogram of the baby, and the baby is doing the, people will see in the heart thing, with their hands, <laughs> and you can see it as plain as day, the oh, baby's cool. doing that. And I told her, I said, he's saying thank you. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, we start at 2.30. I would ask you to be there about 15 minutes early. We'll go over the code of conduct, and then we will line out on our place. 2.30 to 3.30 down in Hamilton. Um, I did mention we were having the potluck today. There is no youth group meeting this afternoon. The youth groups are going to be at the life chain. Um, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, we are going to have a, a short, well, it depends how much you guys talk. I'm not planning on talking a lot, so as far as I'm concerned, it could be a short meeting. But we're going to talk about the Halloween outreach. Take a look at what we've been doing in the past years, see what changes we might need to make, and then we'll move forward from that point on with whatever we decide tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, in here, 7 o'clock. Um, cookies needed for Sunday school. Sign up on the credenza. <coughs> Cookies are desired at brothers' meeting. <laughs> no sign up needed. Just bring them on Thursday. That's right. Um, Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Peace Class starts this Friday. Uh, Dave Ramsey is a Christian financial counselor. He takes financial uh, stewardship, financial planning. And, and he applies scripture to that. He gives sound biblical advice 
how to get control of your finances. Uh, this is part of why we're, we're doing this now is because we've been talking about money. It starts this Friday. Um, it's $100 to get the packet. If you have the packet, you don't need to buy another one. The class is free. It's the packet that you're paying for. Uh, if you need help with getting the packet, talk to me. We will make sure that you can do it, okay? I know a lot of people that need to take this class need to take it because they can't afford $100 to buy the packet. So, so come talk to me. We'll get you signed up. We'll get the material for you. Um, updated church roster coming soon. If you've had a change of address, write it on one of the white cards in front of you. Put it in the box. We'll get it to Dennis. Um, Operation Christmas Child. It is coming up much sooner than we expect. So now's an opportunity to stockpile. Start putting stuff back to fill the boxes. Anything you guys want to share? Um, we have uh, learned that these, there's little kits that are available at the treasure chest. Thanks to oh, yeah. Dean Gerard for making the little cars. So um, we, Gene brought a few kits and distributed them this morning, but uh, you know they're just three or four dollars at the treasure chest in, in Missoula. Now we also, if you don't want to buy a kit and you still want to make a little car for a little boy, that you can get these plans online, and we, or we can we have a couple of copies here. That... Awesome, and and we still the the dresses and the. Uh, what do you call that? Apron? I was going to call it a smock, but that didn't seem appropriate. Uh, the apron, um, the patterns are available. Who do they talk to? You or Jean? Or, okay, to Shelly or Jean to, to get the pattern for that. Um, immediately after church, okay, we're going to pray over the food. Hi, buddy. Oh, thank you. Come here. Uh, immediately after church, we're going to close here with prayer over the food in the back building. Then we will move over to the 10 to 12 year old room to pray for the unsaved loved ones, okay? If you have unsaved loved ones or you, you just want them on the list to pray for, let me know. We'll be praying in there uh, as you guys start feeding. Feeding. <laughs> that, that sounded better in my head. As you guys start to eat, we will be having a meeting in the 10 to 12 year old room. Um, is there anything that I missed? If you're planning to take the financial piece class, please sign up on the sign-up sheet so I have your name and stuff in case any last-minute changes come through. Yeah, and today's kind of the drop-dead day for getting the stuff, so... Okay, anything else? Jeannie? We have the Samaritan First Boxes that are here. And they will. We have <laughs> They're here. They're available. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> Anyone else? They come to our house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pray a blessing over the food, and then we will move to the back building. Father, we thank you for your abundance, your rich provision. We ask, Lord God, that you would bless this food to our bodies. We ask, Father, that our conversation be edifying to one another, that it would glorify you. I ask, Father, that you would increase the bonds of brotherhood at this uh, potluck, Father. And I thank you, Father, for the, the heartfelt kindness and love and generosity of this fellowship. We thank you, Father. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.